this helped me when I saw this, this little graphic about these three stages that I already talked about that uh, George Eldon Ladd talked about was the promise was the present age that we read about in the Old Testament. And then the between the times began with the life of Jesus, but not really during his life. It only, it only really started. The, the, the inauguration of the kingdom happened when he came out of the grave. We, we rightfully put a big emphasis on the cross, as we should, because without the cross, he wouldn't have lived his life sinlessly. He wouldn't have had the blood to bring to the mercy seat. But without the resurrection, he doesn't get to the mercy seat. So the resurrection is the event, including the cross. They go together, and then that's when this new peace that we're living in now begins, right? So that's the between the times. And then the final return will be when it's consummated, okay? So bear with me for a minute that right now we are still living in this time that we're contending for the knowledge of good and evil. And that almost sounds too simple, but I really would like you to just meditate on it for a minute because that was the first sin in the garden. The devil challenged them and said, you can handle the knowledge of good and evil. It was the one thing that God said. You have everything else but that one. And what did the devil do? He got them jealous. He, he questioned the integrity of God. Okay. Jesus comes and changes everything. His life changed everything. And then his death, burial, resurrection, and the sending of the Holy Spirit changes everything. And I love this one. In that period, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Talk about a mission statement. When you see somebody get saved, and we have several people here that are saved, pretty recently saved, and it's, it's not hard for them to think back to how horrible the sin was, and yet you look at them now, and I see signs and I see wonders, right? Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Somebody here today might experience a resurrection of a dead thing in your body coming back to life again. A heart problem, blood vessels that aren't working right. Who knows? You heard what Ken Fish said. People's legs were growing out in the classroom. So the death, resurrection, the beginning of the end times. That's interesting, right? Because end times, boy, there's a million books about the end times. But it's just the idea that there's two stages here. When Jesus came, it started, but it's not going to finish. It's not going to be fully consummated until his final return. So what do we do in the meantime? We occupy until he comes. We stay busy about the Father's business. We try to demonstrate miracles. We try to do what the apostles did in, in the book of Acts. We try to go about the Father's business. Are we great at it? No, probably not. Are we fully qualified? No. But, but who said that we're supposed to be? In fact, it says right in there, it's to show the world that it's not about your gifts. It's about the greatness of God in you. Amen. So there really is a very big humbling process that happens as a Christian. And, and we you know, have made a prayer ministry available for anybody who wants it. And you know, if you're in that prayer ministry room, it can be pretty humbling. But why not just pull apart some of those structures that you were leaning on that were not from God? That's what, that's what it says in the book of Hebrews. Let us lay aside the weights that are slowing us down. And a ministry session is really just there to help us see what are the weights that are holding you back? What are the things you believe that are not godly? What got planted into your spirit that isn't in agreement with the word of God? Break the hold of that thing. Break the lie. Break agreement with the lie that someone spoke over you, someone of influence, your mother, your father, some coach that you had, kept saying that you were never going to amount to anything. That's not what God says about you. So that's a lie. We break those lies, and then that weight gets thrown off. And now we get elevated into who he wants us to be. So I'm almost done. The Holy Spirit outpouring is something that in, in Hebrews, again, I believe it's Hebrews, that says that... The angels longed for the power that's available to you right now. The Old Testament saints longed to have what's available to you right now, and they couldn't have the completion of their vision without us. But what are we doing with it? That's the point. Not to be guilt-tripping people, but it's already in there. You've got Holy Spirit if you said yes to Jesus. Now our goal is to try to help you. Have hope about that and say, you know what, Lord, I am in the presence of the future. I already have a down payment. 
It's one of the words that, got, that was used in the New Testament. You already have a deposit of what you will have in fullness when he comes with his final return. It's a seal in another place. God stamp you with the seal of his Holy Spirit. You've already got what you need. Now you have to use it. Demonstrate it. And one of the easiest ways is love. <laughs> it's not really that easy, is it? It's not easy to hug a porcupine, man. That hurts. And its final return is coming. I already mentioned the book of Revelation. But I just want to think about this too. Like, it is finished. Why did Jesus say it is finished at this part? Because I thought, you said, Pastor, that it just began. How is it finished? What did he mean by it is finished? And I know a lot of you already know it meant a whole lot, didn't it? It meant my addiction was finished, I can tell you that. I stopped doing drugs. I stopped smoking pot. I had so much money in my pocket, I thought they were having babies in there. All I did was stop doing drugs. Amazing. I had the death sentence removed off of my life. I had hope. I had a way of escape from all the sins that came. Man, he finished that whole old season of death that had no hope at all. Anybody else here, am I the only one? Did your life radically transform the day you got saved? None of that could have happened without the Savior, without salvation. There's no hope. And that's the people that you're walking around with every day on your jobs and passing on the street in New York City. They have no hope. They just keep doing more and more drugs. More pornography. There's never been a bigger demand for pornography. That's a part of what comes out in this movie about sex trafficking. The people that are involved say they can't believe the demand keeps increasing. Why? Because we still think we can handle good and evil. We think we can handle the knowledge of good and evil. God said the first thing, no, you can't. But that's the pride of the world and the pride of the devil. So it's not a crutch. God's not a crutch because you're weak. It's an acknowledgement that you recognize the way life works and that with our sinful nature, we can't do it in our own strength. So, wow, it was finished because there was no hope in the past, but now I have hope. And the hope that I have once I come into his kingdom, it's still available to me, not just when I die and go to heaven. And John chapter 3 can be a little confusing, right? When you hear that, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom. Unless you're born again, you can't enter into the kingdom. Well, the Holy Spirit light goes on, and you see that there's a kingdom available. I don't have to take drugs. I don't have to sleep with different people. I can make a covenant commitment to one woman for my whole life and be happy about that. I can go to a party and be funny without being drunk. I don't have to live with my boyfriend or girlfriend before we get married. Like, I'm going to respect myself as a woman would say. Not me. I'm not identifying as a woman, okay? <laughs> when you say no to that guy, you're showing respect for yourself. You're saying, I value me more than you do. And if you want to shift your thinking and start to value me, then, you can, then we can talk. But uh-uh. you got to be willing to make a lifelong commitment to me before I decide you're getting a baby out of me. Because if we're going to raise a family together, i got to know I can trust you. Oh, boy, we could do a lot of sermons on that one, couldn't we? 